straight ahead on Falcon Weekly, a sweet victory. The men's basketball team earns a spot in the Sweet 16. See highlights from the tournament in Tennessee. Also, go behind the scenes of Montevallo's fishing team's first tournament series. Plus, Facebook is changing its policy about nudity on the social media platform. Find out what pictures you can see, soon see on your timeline. And recall alert, Kia is recalling one of its popular cars. Find out what could make it dangerous to drive. Falcon Weekly starts now. Hello and welcome to Falcon Weekly. I'm Mary-Kate McCarrick. And I'm Brianna Davis. Thanks so much for joining us. Today in campus news, the Montevallo men's basketball team is in Tennessee competing in the NCAA tournament. After Sunday night's victory, the team is preparing for the next game on Tuesday. Falcon Weekly sports anchor Hannah Bell joins us with the latest. Hannah? Thanks, Mary-Kate. The men's basketball team, team has no doubt had a fantastic season. The team has advanced to the NCAA Sweet 16 in Sunday night's game against UNC Pembroke. Falcon Weekly's Gerald Cunningham is at Lincoln Memorial University in Harrogate, Tennessee with a look at our Falcons in action. The Falcons are advancing to the Sweet 16 after dominating performances against Carson Newman and UNC Pembroke. This will be the eighth time in the university's history. The Falcons kept both games close in the first half, but poured it on their opponents in the second. Coach Young appreciated the toughness from his team. I thought my guys fought really hard on defense the second half. We came out and battled and matched the physical play that they, that they laid on us the first half. Current students and alumni traveled from Alabama to Harrogate, Tennessee to watch the Montevallo Falcons go to war. And one soldier stole the show. Senior Ryan May caught fire against UNC Pembroke, scoring 25 points on 9 of 10 shooting, including four three-pointers. Ryan had been in a slump in the past three games, but that never stopped his confidence. I'm a shooter, man. All my teammates were behind me and just kept faith in me and believed in me. And, you know, I just did what I've been doing since I've been five, shooting the basketball. So. With the support of the Falcon faithful in the stands and a group of guys that share the same passion, the men's basketball team has a chance to do something special, win a championship. Montevallo will play the Mount Olive Trojans Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Central. We'll place the link on our Facebook page so you can watch the live stream. Good luck to the men's basketball team. I'll be back later in the show with a look at the rest of your, Fal your Falcons athletics news. Thanks, Hannah. In other campus news, we now know who will be giving the commencement address at UM's spring graduation ceremony. Former New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson has agreed to address the semester's graduates. In addition to being a governor, Richard's career includes time as a member of Congress and a U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. He also served as President Clinton's Secretary of Energy. UM's spring commencement will be Saturday, May 2nd. It's time to start thinking about summer and fall courses and meeting with your advisor. The course schedule for summer and fall term will go online Tuesday, March 17th. Registration begins after spring break. Graduate students start signing up for classes April 6th, seniors on April 7th, and juniors on April 9th. Sophomores start registration on April 13th, and freshmen start April 15th. Registration opens at 7 a.m. on those days. The University of Montevallo's fishing team is hosting a benefit tournament series. This is a first for the team. As a member of the fishing team, I wanted to give an insider's look on how the first tournament went. The University of Montevallo's Bass Anglers Association is hosting its first tournament series. The team is holding this benefit tournament to raise awareness for their sport. Um, we <coughs> decided to put this on to raise money and to get our name out there more. Because a lot of people know about the college fishing, but not as much um, that University of Montevallo has a fishing team. The series consists of three tournaments and the first kicked off at Lake Mitchell in Clanton, Alabama. Participants partnered into teams of two. All they needed was some bait, hooks, and a boat to go out and try their luck at winning first place. The competition began with a chilly start. Um, I thought I about froze to death this morning. It was a little rough. It was really cold this morning. It was a long, cold morning until the sun come up, and the fish were biting pretty good for us. 
Despite the weather, the team came back happy with their catches. We did pretty good today, maybe top 10. I think we did pretty good. At 3 p.m., participants started to weigh in. 695, Tommy Young. Woo! Montebello placed in the top 10, and Clanton local Hunter Penny took first place with a collective weight of almost 20 pounds. Team member Daniel Perry was pleased with the day's earnings. Went good. We made $250, so it, it really helps us out trying to go to some of the bigger tournaments. Besides raising funds for the program, team president Brandon Easterling hopes to gain new members as well. Anybody that wants to fish or learn to fish, I mean, it's, it's for everybody on campus. The team's next two tournaments will take place April 25th on Lake Logan Martin and April 9th on Lay Lake. Here's a look at some other events happening on campus this week. 5MU will host their first dance marathon this Thursday from 6 to 9 p.m. in Myring Gym for the Children Miracle Network Hospitals. Winning dancers will receive a $100 prize. The event is open to all students. And Montevallo, and Montevallo will be having an electronics recycling day this Saturday, March 21st from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the City Recycling Center. Most items can be recycled for free, but hard drives will cost $10 and computer monitors destruction will cost $7. Televisions will not be accepted. A millionaire murder suspect will be extradited to Los Angeles to face charges in a 2000 killing. Robert Durst appeared in a New Orleans court today where he waived his right to fight extradition. The millionaire real estate heir was arrested over the weekend. He is accused of killing his longtime friend at her Los Angeles home 14 years ago. The arrest comes as an HBO aired the final part of a six-part documentary series on Durst called The Jinx. Sunday's episode featured Durst saying he killed them all on a live mic. His lawyer says Durst's offhand remarks may not mean anything. The 11 people on board a Black Hawk helicopter that crashed off the Florida Panhandle last week have been identified. The helicopter crashed in about 25 feet of water during a nighttime training exercise in dense fog. The Louisiana National Guard said seven were Marines from Camp Lejeune in North Carolina and four were soldiers from a National Guard unit in Hammond, Louisiana. Crews worked over the weekend to pull the Black Hawk helicopter to the surface. A barge from Alabama was sent to help in the recovery operations. Demonstrators in Alabama have finished their march commemorating a key po a key point in the civil rights movement. Around 100 people gathered in Selma, Alabama last Monday to reenact the famous march that was led by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in 1965. It took five days for the group to walk the 54 miles from Selma to Montgomery. The march ended Friday at the state capitol steps with a voting rights rally. A 20-year-old man was arrested Sunday for the shooting of two police officers. A little after midnight on Thursday, Jeffrey Leehouse Williams fired three shots in the direction of the Ferguson Police Department. Williams claimed that he wasn't aiming for the officers, but for someone who had supposedly robbed him earlier that evening. Williams is charged with two counts of first-degree assault, one count of firing a weapon from a vehicle, and three counts of armed criminal action. He faces up to life in prison if convicted. Williams will remain in the St. Louis County Jail with a cash-only bail set at $300,000. Meanwhile, demonstrators rallied in front of police headquarters in Ferguson, Missouri, Sunday to voice support for embattled Mayor James Knowles. On Friday, five city residents filed on an affidavit to try to force a referendum on whether to remove Knowles from office. The mayor and other city officials have come under fire following last year's fatal police shooting of Michael Brown. Last week, the police chief and city manager resigned following a Justice Department report alleging institutionalized racism with the Ferguson government. Mourners gathered at a Wisconsin, Wisconsin high school Saturday to say goodbye to a 19-year-old who was shot and killed by a Madison police officer. Hundreds filed, filed filled each East High School to pay their last respects to Tony Robinson. At one point, those gathered raised their fists in protest of Robinson's killing. The biracial teen was unarmed when he was shot and killed by a white police officer last week, raising accusations of excessive force. Police say Robinson assaulted the officer, who then drew his weapon and fired. 
A well-known pastor of a Georgia megachurch says he needs a new private jet, and he is looking for the members of his church to pay for it. Pastor Creflo Dollar is asking for $65 million for a new private jet. On a project page posted on the church's website, they said that if just 200,000 people gave $300 each, they would be able to afford a new way to take to the skies. The minister's previous plane failed recently during a trip to Europe. Dollar says that a plane is essential, essential for global ministry work. Pope Francis is causing a stir after he made comments over the weekend that he thinks his time as Pope will be brief. Speaking to a Mexican TV network, Pope Francis revealed that he feels God calling him to only lead the church for a few years. Typically, a pope serves as the head of the Catholic Church until their death. However, Francis said the, re the resignation of his predecessor, Benedict XVI, has reopened the door to having a pope emeritus. Pope Francis says he enjoys being able to ask for the former pope's guidance and advice, which is a privilege many popes before him didn't have. Remember, there's more news online 24-7. Just search for UM Falcon Weekly on Facebook and Twitter to see more stories and news updates throughout the week. Some Bluebell ice cream is being recalled after being linked to several deaths. Coming up, find out if the potentially contaminated ice cream might be in your freezer. And St. Patrick's Day is all about the green. See how much money people are expected to spend on this year's holiday. And Kia is recalling its soul cars for a potentially deadly defect and Chevy is also recalling one of its cars. Those stories more when, and more when Falcon Weekly returns. Welcome back to Falcon Weekly. Reporter Connor Busey joins us live in the studio with this week's consumer headlines. Connor? Three people are dead and two are sick after eating Bluebell ice cream at a Kansas hospital. Officials say the ice cream is contaminated with a strain of bacteria called Listeria. Bluebell has confirmed the outbreak at a Wichita hospital and has since recalled the dangerous products. The state reports six cases in four counties, though only five of those have been linked to the outbreak. The FDA warns if consumers have these Bluebell products to throw them out. They include chocolate chip country cookie, Great Divide Bar, Sour Pop Green Apple Bar, Cotton Candy Bar, Scoops, Vanilla Steak Slices, Almond Bar, and the No Sugar Added Moo Bar. Health officials say the contaminated ice cream was made on a single production line at one of Bluebell's plants in Texas and was likely exposed to the, the Listeria while it was still in liquid form. According to the FDA, Listeria grows very well in refrigerators, even when they are set as low as 40 degrees Fahrenheit. The FDA says, also says lo the longer food is stored, the more opportunity the bacteria has to grow. In other consumer headlines, Kia will begin recalling some of its sole and sole electric vehicles later this month. The problem with the vehicles lies in the accelerator pedal, which can bend and fracture and can result in a crash. The recalled cars are manufactured from July 2013 to this January. Those with affected cars can contact Kia's customer service for more information. GM is also recalling one of its vehicles for being too quiet. While silence may be golden, some owners of the Chevy Volt are saying they forget to turn the car off. This gets dangerous when the, when the car is in the garage and the hybrid's gas engine kicks in, resulting in the buildup of carbon monoxide. The recall affects more than 64,000 cars. GM is fixing the problem with a software update that will automatically shut the car off after an hour and a half of idle time. For more information on recent consumer recalls, visit recalls.gov. Reporting for Falcon Weekly, I'm Connor Busey. Back to you, Mary-Kate. Thanks, Connor. If you're thinking about tying the knot, get ready to shell out a hefty chunk of change. According to the knot, couples spend a little over $31,000 on their wedding last year. That's up more than 4% from 2013. Most of the areas where couples spent the most were the venue, engagement ring, and the musical entertainment. And according to research from American Express Spending and Saving Tracker, while couples are spending about $68 on catering for each of their guests, those guests aren't returning the favor. The average cost of a gift will drop from $109 last year to $106 this year. The wearing of green might not bring in the green stuff for retailers this St. Patrick's Day. Karen Kafa looks at some of the reasons consumers may not be willing to splurge in today's Consumer Watch. 
127 million Americans say they'll celebrate St. Patrick's Day this year. That's according to an annual survey by the National Retail Federation. Total spending is expected around $4.6 billion, slightly lower than last year's estimated total of almost $4.8 billion. Cheers, man. Last year's spending got a boost when about one in three Americans said they'd go out for the holiday and celebrate at a restaurant or bar. This year, that number is slightly lower, and about half of Americans say they'll mark the holiday at a private home, either by attending a party or by enjoying a special dinner from their own kitchen. Some of that could be because of the weather in many parts of the country, but retailers also haven't seen lower gas prices translating into more spending elsewhere. And big St. Patrick's Day celebrations are usually a tough sell when the holiday falls on a weekday, as it does this year. Nonetheless, leading the way among St. Patrick's Day celebrations, consumers ages 25 to 34 who will spend almost $42 on the holiday. For Consumer Watch, I'm Karen Kafa. People around the world are getting in the St. Patty's Day spirit. And the Chicago River has literally gone green. People gather Saturday to watch the annual tradition ahead of the, Saint, of the city St. Patrick's Day parade. The holiday is officially celebrated on Tuesday. Has the iPad lost its mojo? Sales from the iPad dropped 18% for four straight quarters in 2014. Experts say consumers as a whole have lost interest in tablets, but the iPad has fared worse than its rivals. Apple's control of the tablet market is expected to drop below 26% this year from 29% in 2014. But on the other hand, according to a real estate research firm, shopping malls with an Apple store do better sales do better sales-wise than malls without one. Green Street advisors say sales are 10% higher and could continue to increase as Apple begins to sell its new Apple Watch this spring. A new Nielsen report on audience behavior shows streaming services like Netflix and Amazon are growing in popularity with Americans. Four in ten households with traditional television have an online streaming account like Netflix or Amazon. The study found mostly young and middle-aged households along with families log on to watch programming. Media giants like Time Warner and Viacom are trying to get in on the streaming frenzy by offering video subscriptions directly to consumers, making cable providers unnecessary. In weather news, it is official. With nearly 109 inches of snow, Boston's winter is one, of, is one for the history books. According to the National Weather Service, the city has had the snowiest season ever on record there. As of 7 p.m. Eastern Sunday night, the NWS announced Boston Logan Airport had received 108.6 inches of snow. That is a full inch more than the previous Boston all-time record of 107.6 inches of snow. And that was set in the winter of 1995. Now it's time for a check of our Montevallo forecast. Falcon Weekly's Umar Nadir joins us with a look at this week's weather. Hi Umar. Thanks guys. <clears throat> today's, high, today's high was 79 degrees. Um, heading into the evening uh, we're going to have a low of 56 degrees. Um, on Tuesday it'll be partly sunny our high tomorrow will be 80 degrees with a low of 53 degrees. Um, heading into weather, heading into Wednesday, we're going to experience a little bit of showers in our local area. Our high will be 66 degrees, low of 54 degrees. Um, same, on, same pretty much on Thursday with a high of 65 degrees and a low of 55 degrees. On Friday, it'll mostly be cloudy but we'll have a high of 66 degrees with a low of 45 degrees. Temperature is going to drop a little bit there. Heading into Saturday, we'll have a high of 71 degrees with a low of 46. On Sunday, it'll be more of the same with a high of 70 degrees and a low of 45 degrees. That's a quick look at your seven-day forecast. Back to you all in the studio. Thanks, Umar. Facebook is updating its community standards and has clarified its definition of nudity. Pictures of genitals, fully exposed buttocks, and female breasts, if they include the nipple, are not allowed. However, if the woman is breastfeeding or showing post mastectomy scars, then that's okay. Facebook also said so-called revenge porn in which someone posts sexual images of another person without permission is not allowed. 
According to a recent report, millennials in the U.S. have more to learn before they can run the world. A study conducted by Princeton-based Educational Testing Service found that young people in the U.S. lack many key skills necessary to join the global workforce. The study examined the skills of millennials in 23 countries and found the U.S. lacking, with young Americans testing last or near the bottom in all categories. And this next story could explain why millennials don't have the necessary job skills. New research shows that our heavy use of smartphones could be making us dumber. In three separate studies from the University of Waterloo in Canada, researchers took a look at how people think and feel. They also evaluated verbal and math skills. Then, they investigated how people use their smartphones. They found that people who are more cognitive thinkers spent less time on their phone search engines. A co-author to the studies say people who rely more on intuition when making decisions are more likely to use search engines. He says there could be an association between using your smartphone a lot and lowering your intelligence, but more research is needed to prove this. Researchers say that if we rely too, hev too heavily on the internet to problem solve, it could potentially cause problems as we age. In this week's entertainment news, Rihanna is putting her name in fashion history books with Dior's latest campaign, and a sequel is amongst us 20 years later. Here's Andy Rose with the Hollywood Minute. Poised to make fashion history, the singer is set to star in the upcoming Dior Secret Garden campaign, making her the first black woman to represent the fashion house. The campaign was shot at the Palace of Versailles and is set to debut this spring. Two decades after cult classic Mallrats hit theaters, Kevin Smith has announced a sequel. The director teased the news on Twitter, writing, I smell a rat, and confirmed it during a recent radio interview. No word yet on whether stars Ben Affleck, Jason Lee, or Shannon Doherty will be returning for the sequel. You shall not go to the ball. Even without her glass slipper, Cinderella sprinted past the box office competition this weekend. The live-action Disney reboot brought in an estimated $70 million. Run All Night trailed way behind the fairy tale, grossing just over $11 million. And Kingsman, The Secret Service, rounded out the top three. It made more than $6 million. For Hollywood Minute, I'm Andy Rose. Singer Elton John is calling for a boycott against fashion house Dolce & Gabbana. Elton John is upset with the house founder's comments to an Italian magazine referring to in vitro fertilization children as chemical and synthetic. John himself has two children with his husband through this IVF process. More than 14,000 Twitter followers are supporting the hashtag boycott Dolce & Gabbana, calling for a boycott. A, spokes, a spokesperson for Dolce & Gabbana says the comments were not meant to judge others. Andy Samberg is taking his act from Brooklyn to Hollywood. The actor, writer, and comedian has been chosen to host this year's Primetime Emmy Awards. Samberg won an Emmy for Saturday Night Live and a Golden Globe for his starring role on TV's Brooklyn Nine-Nine. The 67th Primetime Emmy Awards will air live from the Nokia Theater in Los Angeles on September 20th. This game show host just renewed his contract. If you answered, who is Alex Trebek, you are correct. Jeopardy fans can breathe a sigh of relief. Despite the hints that he is ready to retire, Sony Pictures announced last Wednesday that Trebek has renewed his contract through the 2017-2018 season. According to The Hollywood Reporter, the 74-year-old takes home $10 million a year. Three classic comic book characters are, supporting, are sporting new looks. Superman, Wonder Woman, and Archie Andrews debuted their fresh makeovers over this week. Superman is pretty cool and casual with a t-shirt and jeans. As for Archie, he's getting ready for his now, t his now TV show by debuting a modern look. Other characters such as Batman and The Flash are also getting a new look. Coming up, check out the highlights from the men's basketball win over Pembroke. And Taran Brown is at it again. See the players' latest accomplishments. Sports is next. Falcon Weekly. I'm Hannah Bell with a look at this week's sports. The men's basketball team has moved up to the Sweet 16 in the NCAA tournament. 
As the game began, Taran Brown and Ryan May led with several three-point shots, sending the Falcons ahead. In the close game, the Falcons were tied against Pembroke Braves at the halftime. After the half, Montevallo stepped up, taking the game with a score of 78-59. to This is Coach Danny Young's 10th season to lead a team to the Sweet 16. To determine whether the Falcons will move forward in the tournament, Montevallo will take on Mount Olive Tuesday night. For instant game updates, be sure to like and follow Falcon Fever on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Senior Turan Brown is uh, Dactronic's all-region first team for the second year in a row. Brown also received the title of Dactronic's Men's Basketball Southeast Region Player of the Year. Brown has scored nearly 1,700 points in his career, making him eligible for the National Player of the Year. Congratulations, Turan! The softball and baseball teams both took wins and losses this weekend. The softball team won a doubleheader against Georgia Southwestern on Friday, but lost two games to Columbus State on Saturday. They will play a breast cancer awareness pink game against Birmingham Southern at home on Tuesday evening. The baseball team also played a doubleheader against Georgia South Southwestern Hurricanes Saturday. The Falcons won the first game, but fell behind in the second. But on Sunday, Montevallo made a comeback against the Hurricanes, winning the game 7-4. The baseball team will play in North Alabama on Wednesday. The men's track and field team met at Birmingham Southern College Invitational Friday and Saturday. Sophomore runner Donnie Barnes took first place in the 5,000-meter uh, run with a time of 15 minutes and 5 seconds. Barnes crossed the finish line just 5 seconds before the second place runner. That's a look at this week's sports. Back to you. Thanks, Hannah. Before we go, here's something you've got to see. Faith experts say the sun unleashed its first significant solar flare of the year Wednesday. NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory captured the, an image of the flare. Solar flares have the potential to disturb satellite-based information systems such as GPS, as well as other forms of communications, but are unable to break through the Earth's atmosphere and harm people. That's all the time we have for this week's show. Thank you so much for joining us. And more, and more UM news from MassCom students reporters, be sure to check out the Falcon News Network blog. The web address is on your screen. We'll see you again next week.